Hi, I'm Ernest with Upfix, and today I'll be talking about Tesla wall chargers. So the most common type of charger Tesla vehicle owners have is what's called a mobile charger. These are small, light, portable, and in some cases, it might be all you really need to do overnight charging at home. However, if you want to take charging your Tesla to a whole new level, that's where a wall charger comes in. They're larger in size and will need to be mounted to a wall, whether that's inside or outside your home. With that being said, there are quite a few benefits to consider when deciding on whether or not you'd like to purchase a wall charger. Wall chargers can be customized based on your needs. The charger can be configured to your needs based on a type of circuit breaker you have to match your vehicle's onboard charging capabilities. Depending on the version you have, it'll either come with an 18 foot or a 24 foot cable. It can run off 240 volts instead of 120 volts traditional outlet and can charge up to 80 or 48 amps depending on the configuration of your circuit breaker, which allows the charger to charge up to 50% faster than a mobile charger. It can also be connected to a Wi-Fi network for firmware updates over the air, which can improve the user experience. Keep in mind, this is only for the Gen 2 and 3. On the Gen 1, this isn't available. It can also charge up to 44 miles of range per hour of charge, depending on the model you have. Another cool feature is something called access control, meaning you can select which vehicles are allowed to use the charger. This can especially be helpful if you live in a multi-unit building or neighborhood and your wall charger is outside. This is also available only on the Gen 2 and 3. Tesla wall chargers are specifically designed for Tesla vehicles. They're compatible with the models S, 3, X, and Y. So now I'm going to be talking about the differences between each generation. Gen 1 comes with a 24-foot charging cable and can provide an output of 80 amps when charging. However, it cannot do circuit sharing intelligently share power between the multiple wall chargers that are set up. Gen 2 can also charge at 80 amps and comes with a 24 foot charging cable, but can now also intelligently share power between wall chargers. This is beneficial if you're trying to set up multiple wall chargers and have restricted power from the circuit breaker to charge multiple vehicles at the same time. Now the last gen is the Gen 3, and it's a little controversial and the latest iteration currently for sale. It provides 48 amps of output when charging instead of 80 amps, and now comes with a lighter 18 foot cable instead of the 24 foot charging cable that the previous generations have. This may sound like a drawback, however some might prefer the smaller more flexible wire. Keep in mind that the installation method and material required for higher current flow on the Gens 1 and 2 will differ from what's required to install the Gen 3 wall charger. Meaning, if your current gauge wire is set up only for 48 amps on a Gen 3, and you're trying to go to a Gen 1 or Gen 2, unless the gauge of the wire is sufficient, you'd need to rewire it to accommodate the higher amperage. Tesla wall chargers come with various installation brackets to suit your needs. So depending on where it's going to be installed, you and your installer can mount a different type of bracket on the back of that wall charger housing. Now that you know more about the Tesla wall chargers, it's time to talk about why they fail. Since the first and second gen Tesla wall chargers can provide a higher maximum output of amperage, they're also prone to failure due to overheating. This can also be exacerbated if the incorrect gauge wire is used during the install of the unit itself. The third gen Tesla wall charger can also fail internally, especially if the setup is not done properly. If you're not sure how to go about installing the wall charger properly, find an electrician in your area to assist you with the installation. The correct gauge size wires must be used and the circuit breaker settings must match the settings of the wall charger internally. On the Tesla wall charger itself, there is a way to access and configure it on the inside. If you're having issues with your unit not charging at all, no power output, and you've already confirmed it's not the vehicle by using a mobile charger or charging it at a supercharging station, chances are the unit itself needs to be rebuilt. You can find us online or visit our website upfix.com, find the service repair page for the Tesla wall charger repair and send it in. We recommend not opening up the unit itself and trying to disconnect the charging cable from the unit so that we can test the entire unit including the cable. Our certified Upfix repair technicians will diagnose and repair your part and keep you up to date along each step of the repair process. If you're experiencing an issue with an electronic part in your Tesla vehicle that's outside of the Tesla warranty, send us a message through our website. If you scroll down on our website, you'll see a Submit Custom Repair Request button. Let us know what issues you're having and someone will reach out to assist you further. Hopefully you learned something new and helpful about Tesla wall chargers, the pros and cons, and what issues might arise with these. 
If you like this video and would like to see more like it, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Leave your questions down in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.